The worst case scenario for the US is that China makes that leap, that this next five year plan or the five year plan after that finally hits home. Chinese chip manufacturers emerge and become competitive to Intel, to Nvidia, to Broadcom, to what Apple can produce inside. The worst case scenario, at least from a globalist's point of view, is bipolarization of the world. It's not good for global trade, but if I may be allowed to wax lyrical for a second, it ain't good for the advancement of humankind. Almost everything we use depends on silicon semiconductors called chips. Today, about a trillion chips are made a year, or 128 for every person on the planet. And China's government is lending the industry the same strategic importance it gave to its atomic bomb program. The key semiconductor is the advanced logic chip. It's the most expensive and complex piece of silicon that gives computers and smartphones their intelligence. Right now, there's one company that's crucial when it comes to making advanced logic chips. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSMC. So when TSMC has a shortage, entire industries shut down. And this dependency on Taiwan worries Western countries. But China's also worried, since they too rely on Taiwan, which has strong ties to the US for their chip imports. The result of all this? Multi-billion dollar plans by multiple countries in a race to dominate the mother of all cutting edge technologies. The transistors which give chips their functionality are small, very small. The smaller transistors are, the more you can fit into a chip, which in turn will offer more computing power. But making these chips has gotten so incredibly complicated and expensive that it's difficult to keep up. That's why the number of manufacturers at the industry's cutting edge has fallen from over 25 in 2000 to just three. But now the American champion Intel has shown signs of a slowdown. Although it's dominated the industry for the last 30 years, it's starting to fall behind in manufacturing and has announced that, like everyone else, it may start outsourcing some of its work to TSMC. By volume, South Korea's Samsung actually makes more chips than any other manufacturer. But the company mainly focuses on memory chips rather than the custom-made logic chips that companies depend on TSMC for. Both Samsung and Intel have recently announced multi-billion dollar investments in the foundry business, although they won't be a threat to TSMC for years to come. But whether it's South Korea, the United States or Taiwan, China's relationship with all three is less than ideal. Not to mention, a lot of the equipment and software provided to TSMC and Samsung to manufacture chips is made by US companies. And the US has leveraged its position to enact sanctions on China, banning the country from using US technology out of security concerns. The American tech embargo began as an effort against Huawei over national security, but bans and restrictions now affect at least 60 firms. These include SMIC, China's chip champion, which has been put on a blacklist. At the end of 2020, TSMC's sales to Chinese clients dropped by roughly 70%. And for the first time ever, Huawei reported a drop in revenue. But US sanctions might not be such a simple solution. China is the largest purchaser of chips in the world, as well as a manufacturer of less sophisticated chips for companies like Qualcomm and other American companies. We're investing aggressively in areas like semiconductors and batteries. That's what they're doing and others. So must we. But cutting China out completely isn't an option, since much of the world depends on China to manufacture most of their electronics, like iPhones. From Beijing's perspective, U.S. sanctions are a way to keep China at the bottom end of the supply chain, forever stuck as a low-tier manufacturing hub. 
That's why China is determined to become self-sufficient and is shifting into its highest gear. During its annual NPC meeting in 2021, President Xi Jinping pledged $1.4 trillion to accelerate their tech industry and become totally independent from foreign technology. SMIC, or Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, is China's largest foundry. Although it's still decades behind Taiwan's TSMC, China has shown its ability to throw money and human resources at the development of mega projects. But the chip industry isn't quite the same thing. TSMC has shown it takes much more than capital and human resources. It takes time. And unlike the US or China, Taiwan's economy is largely built around semiconductors. TSMC is located in the small town of Xinchu, which hosts a whole ecosystem of other well-established chip manufacturing and packaging companies. And the industry also attracts Taiwan's best talent. Likewise, in China, students are much more likely to be attracted by companies like Tencent, Baidu and Alibaba, or make their own app. To counter the lack of talent in the field, China's been recruiting talent from abroad, which has been controversial in Taiwan and the US, considering China's history of taking intellectual property. But all these resources and talent still don't necessarily equal success. To make a profit, companies like TSMC have a huge amount of orders from a diverse number of clients, and that also takes years to build up. So if Taiwan was suddenly cut off by a China invasion, for example, there is no TSMC replacement. This choke point came to light during the pandemic when a chip shortage cost the auto industry billions of dollars. This prompted the US to sign deals with TSMC and Samsung to build factories on their own turf. The biggest economic choke point of the 20th century may have been oil passing through the Strait of Hormuz, but now it's microscopic silicon transistors manufactured in Taiwan. But while the US and China are fighting for control of the technology, they still depend on each other for the most part. The trade war really is a case of be careful what you wish for. The chip industry brought attention to itself and lobbied for action against China for years on IP protection. Now that it's happened, they're not happy with the situation. Why they're not happy with that situation? Because they depend upon the Chinese market. It's the fastest growing, biggest market. They need to be able to sell chips into China. Right now, China needs them. China needs what they're producing. Massive wake-up call for China, massive call to them to show that they need to be independent. The worst case scenario for the US is that China makes that leap, that this next five-year plan or the five-year plan after that finally hits home. Chinese chip manufacturers emerge and become competitive to Intel, to Nvidia, to Broadcom, to what Apple can produce inside. The worst case scenario at least from a globalist's point of view, is bipolarization of the world, where you have US and China and countries around the world lining up behind one or the other. It's not good for a lot of things, just starting simply with global trade. But if I may be allowed to wax lyrical for a second, it ain't good for the advancement of humankind.